guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's tutorial is going to be another like milkmaid style kind of top thing. Um, but this time it's going to be made out of this really pretty eyelet fabric that I got from Joann's. And I'm super in love with it, so I think this is going to be super, super pretty. And it's going to have like a lace up front. It's going to be a very different style than the other ones that I've done previously. So for this project, like I mentioned, I'm going to be using this cotton eyelet fabric. Um, you're probably going to need about a yard of this. And then I'm also going to be using this leftover twill fabric that I got from Fabric Wholesale Direct. Um, and I'll try to link both of these in the description box if I can find them both. And again, you're probably going to need just another yard of this for the lining. So this blouse is going to be kind of a mix between a milkmaid top and a corset top. I was scrolling through Pinterest again and this is the inspo pick for this one and I'm kind of in love with it. So it's going to have like the cute dainty like ruffle aesthetic of the milkmaid top mixed with the silhouette and like lace up aesthetic of the corset tops. And I feel like it's going to be almost kind of vintage inspired. So I have really, really high hopes for it. And it also shouldn't be very hard so I hope you guys give it a try. And um, yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> this top really doesn't have very many pieces and every single piece that you cut out of your regular fabric, you're also going to cut out of your lining fabric. So it's really easy to just trace those pieces and cut them all out. Um, so here we have the front pieces and the one on the left is the side piece and the one on the right is the center pieces and you're going to cut two of each. And then here we have back pieces and you're going to cut one of the center pieces and two of the side pieces. And that is all the main pieces for this project. I'm just going to be cutting out two little rectangle pieces later in the video, but I will show you guys that step when we get there. All of our pieces have been cut and the first ones I'm going to work on are the front pieces. And I'm just going to sew one side piece to one center piece. So the curve of the side piece is going to connect to the curve of the center piece. I'm just going to take one of each, lay them pretty side to pretty side, and line up, pin, and stitch right across this edge. And for all of these pieces, you're going to do the exact same thing on the lining pieces as well. Also, since my twill fabric does like to unravel, I'm just going to go down the raw edges right now with a zigzag stitch to help with all the fraying. Now we're going to put the front pieces to the side for just a minute and we're going to work on the back pieces. So all of these smaller edges of the back pieces are the bottoms and the wider ones are the tops and the straight edge should go to the side and the one that's slightly slanted should go towards the center. And now we're just going to put both of these side pieces onto the center piece and sew them all together. And again, it's the same exact dealio with the lining pieces. And now it's time to bring back the front pieces because we're going to connect the front and back pieces together. So the part of the front that is shorter is the part that's going to connect to the back pieces. So I'm going to put these pretty side to pretty side. And they don't match up because I draft all my own patterns and sometimes I just don't measure things properly. So I'm going to make sure that the tops line up and it's okay if the bottom is much shorter on one side. And to make this piece it a little bit snugger on you, you may need to bring the sides in a little bit more like I did here to make the waist a little bit tighter. And if you make any adjustments like that, you want to make sure that you do them the exact same way on the lining pieces too. Now because like I mentioned, these pieces don't quite line up here, I'm just going to trim down both of these pieces so that we have one continuous curve. I also think I want the top part of the bodice to be more rounded, so I'm going to fold these pieces in half and line them all up, and then I'm just going to cut more of a rounded shape. And it's super, super important that the lining piece stays exactly the same as the front piece does. Wow, what a look this whole thing is. So anyway, I tried on the top and I just put pins down the front to connect the two front pieces because those have not been sewn together. And now because we want this to be a lace up, I'm going to draw a line right down the center where the folds meet so that we can mark it and cut that later. And I'm doing this on the lining piece so that we can draw on it and it's like not a problem because we won't see it. And right now the fit is looking pretty nice. And now I think I'm going to take this off and I'm going to cut right down that line on both the lining piece and the front piece. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take both of the bodice pieces and put them pretty side to pretty side. And I'm going to sew the sides that we just cut together. Now 
Now for this project, we need to make some straps. So I just cut out a pretty thin and long strip. Um, and I actually cut this from the end of my eyelet fabric where there was no embroidery so that it would be the exact same fabric but not have any of the texturing. And now I'm just going to fold this long piece in half and sew pretty close to the folded over edge. And this is going to make some nice thin straps. Now I'm going to trim down these edges and turn this piece right side out. So on this top, I'm planning for it to have some ruffles along the top. Um, so I bought this trim from Joann's and I have three yards here, but we probably are only going to need two yards for this project. And this one comes like pre-ruffled, but I actually don't like the amount of gathering that they did. So I think I'm just going to cut it off and ruffle it myself. So the first step of this is just going to be cutting off this like pre-made ruffle here. And now that this is all free, I'm going to put two parallel basting stitches much closer to the finished edge that I want all along this piece so we can gather it up. And now that these stitches are in place, we can pull on two of the stitches that are on the same side to gather this up as much as we want. And now that we have all of these ruffles, I'm going to space them all out so they are nice and even. And then I'm going to pin them to the top edge of the eyelet fabric. So you want to put these pretty side to pretty side. And then I'm just making sure the ruffles lay nice and flat. And then putting a pin to hold them in place. We're going to do that all across the top edge. And now I'm also going to take our strap piece and cut it in half so we have two equal pieces. And I'm also going to pin them down at this step. And I'm going to put mine pretty close to the first seam here. Um, a little bit farther in from this edge. So right about here. And now where the ruffles finish, I also just cut this edge. I'm just going to hem this little side here before we sew this up. So when it's sewn, it should line up right with the edge that we're going to sew it to. And now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to flip it inside out. And I'm going to pin these pieces together, making sure that all the seams align with the lining piece. And now I'm going to very carefully sew these pieces together. And now I am so excited to turn this piece right side out. Look how pretty this edge is! Ah, I love it! And it should already have these straps attached too. I also just tried on the top and I pinned the strap to a length that I liked and then cut them a little bit longer than I needed them. And I want to sew the straps right onto the back seams. So I'm going to turn this inside out again. And I'm just going to seam rip a little section there open. And I'm going to put the strap through that little opening that we just made. And then I am going to repin this and just sew over it again. And now that the straps are done, I'm going to zigzag and trim down that edge again. And I'm also going to take out all of the basting stitches from the ruffles. I just ironed the top out and honestly it was looking like way cuter than I was even expecting. I am so in love with how it's turning out. And we're getting pretty close to finishing up. And the next part we're going to work on is finishing the bottom edges. So for this I'm going to be using some bias tape. And the one I bought is actually double fold but we're only going to want to use single fold for this. So I'm going to show you guys my trick for turning double fold bias tape into single fold bias tape. So I cut out a piece of bias tape that would be plenty big enough to fit around the bottom of the shirt and I'm going to open the fold up. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the center of one side. And then once you do that, you can just use this like single fold bias tape. So honestly, if I'm ever like just buying some extra bias tape to have on hand, I always buy double fold because you can always turn it into a single fold if you need to. Now I'm just opening up the bias tape and pinning one of the folded edges down. And I'm doing this pretty far away from the bottom of the edge just because this was kind of still long on me. And I wanted to take it up just a little bit. And now I'm going to sew across this right on that folded edge all the way down. And when I get to the edges, I'm just going to fold these up a little bit so we have a finished edge. Now I'm going to trim down these edges pretty thin. And now I'm going to turn this edge over to the back side and fold this up. And I'm going to pin down and sew across the other edge. And this is how we're going to get the finished edge on the front.
Now we are on to the final steps of the bodice and we finally need to put something on the front so that we can actually lace it up and try it on. So there's a few different ways to finish this off. You could do grommets or you could do like little ribbon loops. Um, but one technique that I actually saw that I think I'm going to do today is doing a bunch of little buttonholes. So I took the smallest little button that I could find and I'm going to make all the buttonholes this size. The first step of this is marking out how far apart we want all the buttonholes to be. So I think I'm going to space mine out all an inch and a quarter away from each other. So starting from the top, I'm going to put a pin where I want the buttonhole to start. Then I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter and put another pin. And I'm going to continue that all the way down on both sides. So now I'm just going to take my buttonhole foot and get it ready on my sewing machine. And so where we marked out all the pins is the start of the buttonholes. So we're going to line up the buttonhole foot with the edge of the top. You want to make it so that it'll start right where the pins are. And then once everything is all lined up, you can just let your machine go and do its thing. They're so little! And now to finish up the buttons, the last step is you're going to take a seam ripper and you're just going to very carefully seam rip open the buttonholes. And you can go ahead and lace it up with whatever cording or ribbon you want. And once you lace it up, you can call your corset done, or you can go ahead and do this one extra little step that I'm going to do really quickly. And this last little step is optional, um, but if you want the front to have a little bit more coverage, you can cut an extra strip of fabric, fold it in half, and mark where you want the top and bottom to be with the corset. And then I'm going to sew right across the top, go down this side, leave an opening, sew down the other side, and then back across the bottom. And now I'm going to trim this and turn it right side out through that little opening we left. And now you should have this little piece. And now I'm going to bring the top back and I just unlaced it so this will be a little bit easier. So I'm going to take one side and turn it to the back. And now I'm going to take this little extra piece and I'm going to pin it right to the inside of where the buttonholes lay. And now I'm going to top stitch it right to the right of the buttonholes. And now our top is done. And here is the finished corset. This whole milkmaid corset style turned out to be so freaking cute. I'm kind of in love with it. It just felt like that classic princess corset that I was still able to wear like casually out with a pair of jeans. So I just had a lot of fun wearing it and styling it. And because the front lace up is the only way to get the shirt on and off, um, a little tip for you guys is if you don't really like lacing it up every single time, you can totally lace up the front with just some thin elastic to get the same look as a lace, but it actually has some stretch when you're getting it on and off. And like I mentioned, this top is really not very hard, so I hope you guys give it a try because it's still very, very cute. And um, yeah, other than that, I post videos every Fridays, which you guys already know, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. So I will see you guys next time. Bye!